You're listening to the Eldest Jiry Channel. <laughs> Peter's Supernatural Superband by Dave Stancliffe Performed by Otis Gyrie Peter started collecting musical instruments used by famous deceased musicians when he became rich on Wall Street. His ongoing collection was not open to the public because some of it was stolen. It was his pride and joy. Only people he trusted implicitly got to visit his music room, located in his 19-bedroom mansion in upstate New York. Peter was a mystery man with no known surviving family members. He was a self-made man and a wizard. His ability to predict stocks when they would go up or down, or even the future, came from long years of training by the coven that raised him. When the witches sent him out on his own, he was a 21-year-old, and savvy in the ways of the world. Getting rich was easy. Entertaining himself was more difficult at first, until he discovered a love of music. It became all-consuming. He went to operas and rock concerts for years before developing a passion for musical instruments. Then one day a Wall Street trader acquaintance asked him if he would be interested in buying a rare piano. How rare? Peter asked. It's been hidden for seventy-five years, and its owners no longer wants it. It's the last grand piano Sergei Rachmaninov played on Russian soil before the Leninist regime seized his entire state near Tambov in 1917, his acquaintance explained. He moved with his wife and two daughters to Denmark before relocating to New York the following year. Left behind was this European-made grand piano hidden by a first cousin, who later smuggled it into the United States and a safe warehouse, he added. Its condition? Excellent. An expert has kept it in tune. Why sell it now? The owner is old, and perhaps getting a little senile, according to his grandchildren. It seems he's been visiting the warehouse for years, listening to Rachmaninoff play and telling his grandson that the famous musician is the one playing the grand piano. Peter smiled, the biggest smile he had for decades, and asked, How do I get this piano? Money is no problem. To Peter's delight, the story was true. It wasn't long before he was striking up stimulating conversation with Sergei Rachmaninoff. It didn't take him long to go in search of other famous musical instruments, whose owners had died. He worked with all of his financial and magical connections to hunt down the objects of his newly discovered hobby. His next acquisition was Jimi Hendrix's favorite black 1968 Fender Stratocaster with a maple neck. Despite playing many different guitars, including some Gibson Flying Vs and Les Paul Customs, the Stratocaster was his baby. He was buried with it in 1970 after dying from a drug overdose. It took black magic to retrieve the guitar and to entice Jimi Hendrix to play it once again. He had to conjure up female groupies to solidify the arrangement, but it was worth it. Peter never tired of listening to him play his hits like Foxy Lady, Purple Haze, and Wild Thing. Keith Moon's second drum kit, a Ludwig Black Oyster Super Classic, would two toms and a bass drum, plus the previously lost but now found original snare drum, cost Peter two million dollars. Moon, who died in 1978, was another reckless spirit recruited by Peter to play his favorite instrument. Peter found that he had a particular fondness of drums and managed to buy John Bonham's first drum set, a four-piece Trixon in sparkling red. Bonham, who died in 1980, got along great with Moon, and the two played competing solos deep into the night. In fact, the men knew each other when they were alive. Bonham would lead off with a Zeppelin song like Fool in the Rain, showing off his speed, power, and fast bass drumming, while Moon would counter with I Can't Explain, one of the Who's first big hits. The real score in drums came when Peter had to pay a thief to steal Buddy Rich's original drum setup. Included were 
a 14 by 24 bass drum with a moleskin patch and a wooden beater, a 9 by 3 rack tom, two 16 by 16 floor toms, and a 5 by 14 snare drum. His Avita Zildjian cymbals, which included a 20 inch ride, two 18 crashes, and a pair of 14 hi hats and a 6 inch splash, shimmered as Peter looked at them. The set had his preferred wood tip sticks, slightly heavier than a pair of 7As. Buddy, also conjured up by Peter, died of heart disease in 1987. He was widely considered one of the most influential drummers of all time and was known for his virtuoso technique, power, and speed. He never failed to bring the house down with a solo performance of a medley of songs from West Side Story. With Buddy, Peter assembled a trio of drum players for the ages. To him, the cacophony of noise they all made when jamming was the music of the spheres. It took a long time to find just the right brass trumpet. He finally found one made by Henry Selmer of Paris for Louis Armstrong. He managed to entice Satchmo to stop in a couple of nights a week and jam with his supernatural band. Armstrong always opened the evening with a soulful hit that made him famous. What a wonderful world! As the years went by, he coaxed other dead famous singers and musicians to come by his mansion and perform. Some on a regular basis, others, like Elvis Presley, only came by on Sundays. Some came by a couple of days a week, like Dwayne Allman. Every night, stars like Jim Morrison, Janis Joplin, Buddy Holly, Jim Croce, and many Ripperton could be seen mingling in rooms throughout the vast mansion. The Grateful Dead's pianist, Keith Gutshaw, and Sergei Rachmaninoff were perhaps the oddest pair to listen to, as one would play a few notes, then the other would follow them up with his own, until the two styles wove a magic that captivated listeners. As Peter got older, he finally decided to share his supernatural collection of stars, and invited special friends to spend the night to hear the poltergeists talk about their careers and play their favorite instruments until the dawn. As it stands, this tale evolved from a conversation with a friend about haunting melodies from beyond the grave. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to listen to this story in its entirety. If you enjoy what you hear and what I do and would like to support me and my efforts, visit my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Otis Jiry. If you haven't yet, please hit the like button and subscribe today and share this video with everyone on your social media. It helps more than you could ever imagine. Again, thank you for listening and have a great day. God bless you.